Greetings, one and all, to the most cursed, most cringiest corner of the internet. YouTube channel content creator actively oh, alienating everyone in both the analog and digital world. Welcome and good evening, wonderful dice of all alignments. I am Lunar D8. I don't know how much longer the game is, this might be the final part. I don't know how long to the ending or how long this part will be. Yes. Okay, exit. I don't remember. Oh right, we're supposed to be going to check uh, Michio's room to prove her innocence. So probably leave from the main entrance. Yep, everything's still red. Is there anything new on the no? Over here. No. Um, bus stop, I assume? I don't... Oh. We go along the road, finally reach the door. But the front door is locked, not surprising that it's already past curfew. The back door might be open. The door manager is a bit sloppy sometimes, but she often forgets to lock the door. Dory was right, the back door is open. <coughs> See, I told you. We'll be in trouble if we get caught. Let's hurry. Fortunately for us, the door entrance is empty when we get there. Thank goodness the manager isn't here. I thought she'd stay behind Michio's disappearance and all. Looks like she went home at her regular time. Wow, what a loyal employee. Shall we look for the key to Michio's room? The manager has the duplicates, so we'll be able to be fine as long as we find that. Yes. This is the administration office where the door manager works. The key should be around here. Please wait a minute, I'll take a look. Dorio enters the administration room. I'm the only one in the entrance now. This is bad. If a student happens to come in at this time, I'm not going to have any good explanation. But why would they? If they are coming out this time, I mean, they are breaking curfew themselves. Not only did I barge in permission, but this is a female dormitory. There's no justification for me being here. Um, ghosts? Come on, get back here soon. My impatience is starting to grow. But then Doryu appears, granting my wish. In her hand is a key with a label attached. Found it. This is the key to Michio's room. So, it was easy to find, huh? This dorm sure is unsafe. Easy to access keys, and the back door isn't even locked. The key was in a sturdy case with a combination lock. I only know the combination because Michio told me. How did she know? Yeah, why did Michio know it? She snooped on the manager once when she was entering and memorized it. She didn't intend to do anything bad with it, though, probably. Goodness. This should get us into Michio's room. Her room is on the fourth floor. Let's take the elevator. A row of mailboxes. Based off the number of the mailboxes I see, the student dormitory is quite big. Hmm. There are stairs. It all leads out of darkness. The building has an elevator. I better make use of it. This is the administration manager's office, okay. Mm -hmm. There's an elevator in front of me. It's not a very big one. Probably can only fit five or f four or five people tops. Let's go to the fourth floor. Once we arrive at the fourth floor, I let Dorio lead us down the hallway. We come to stop in front of the door with the number 402 on it. This is Michio's room. The moment Dory opens the door, I duck into the room. Okay. 
Turn the light to reveal the whole room. Is this a single room? I only see one bed here. I just sort of assume you'd be sharing rooms since it's a student dormitory. It's not really common, but yes, all the rooms here are single rooms. Well, now that I know this room only has a single occupant, that means that anything I see here is a reflection of Michio's personality. This doesn't look like a room that a terrifying spirit length departed would live in. I'm going to see what I can find. Just wait here. I shall leave the investigating to you. Mm -hmm. It's a small refrigerator for a single person. There are a few bottles of soda inside. Yes. A calendar with a frog drawing is hanging on the wall. It's already October, the calendar remained on August. Okay. So, you haven't switched the calendar in a couple months? Which is around the time that you guys got cursed. Hmm. There's a large poster of a loving frog mom and her frog child. Wait a minute, there's a problem. I I mean, granted, there is a terrarium there, but given everything I'm seeing here, I'm assuming it has a frog in it that's probably died of starvation or been eaten by bugs. It just, here's the thing. Everything in her room screams frog. Heck, look over here. It's like some sort of like, like on the right side of her window. That little thing where she got post notes. It's in the shape of a frog. There's a frog plushie on a bed. The calendar's a frog. There's a terrarium over there as well. There's mobile terrariums. There's a small mirror. There's, I mean, there's literally the only defining characteristic you would say if you look at this room is the person here is obsessed with frogs. But there's two problems with that. Michio is an entomologist, at least in personality. She is constantly talking about bugs and insects and other animals in that way. In addition to that, you know, one of the, the one of the two major god beings that's part of this local region's theology where there's a spirit that has supernatural powers and has been here for generations is entirely based its personality on insects. Also, Frogs would perhaps be seen as offensive to such where you're like, well, why would frogs be offensive? Because frogs eat bugs. This would be like someone who's fascinated with snakes having plushies of muskrats. This would be like someone who's fascinated with snakes having wolverine figurines. Yes, it's a stretch for a joke. But the main point is this. Her entire personality, everything she ever says, is always revolving around bugs and insects, which is the, also the defining characteristic of our antagonist, The Departed, who is based off of a bug or centipede-based deity. A ghost that has been around for many generations to the point that it is viewed by others and by itself as a god that is obsessed with the insect world and romanticizes it. And there is not a single thing here to do with insects other than using it as a food source for what she does like. Frogs. What does this tell me? I never met Michio. Not once. Michio died before I ever even met her. The real Michio? Granted, if Mushi... I may be jumping the gun on this, but this is like... Guys, everything here is frogs. Even the curtains are green. Everything is frogs. Frogs eat insects. I imagine if you're a person who is like fascinated with insects, this would be... This would be offensive to you. This would piss you off. This would be something you'd be extremely uncomfortable with. And keep in mind, Dorio Michio's curses are different. Dorio has that mark on her face. Hmm. 
Michio has no noticeable mark. I consider maybe it was on that hand that she was hiding. But here's the thing. Her hair is different. Michio's hair didn't change. I mean, Dorio's hair didn't change. She got a curse mark. Michio has a different hair color that's showing a supernatural characteristic to her. Now, Granny, who knows? Maybe Dorio is actually secretly the doll spirit and she's the other deity. Who knows? Maybe the doll deity is based off of the woman who died not having her fiancé and was then the doll spirit, which was also a cursed item. And also that original fiancé woman would have probably been cursed by the original bug deity, which means that that other deity is slightly older. Because this is why they go, oh, what, what, what is a god? I mean, obviously, there, as a Christian, I believe, you know, there's one true god, you know, the creator of the universe, but loosely, if you define gods as, well, whatever somebody says is a god. After all, that's kind of how, you know, every, how there's like hundreds and hundreds of religions, and how there can be new deities come to existence that never existed before. And like I said, it could literally be either a person who died and became a ghost that then had enough power to endure and become so powerful in fear to be regarded as a deity. Or it could be like a demiurge situation or dimerge where enough people simply had enough of an emotional faith belief in something that the psychic energy of the human mind created a spiritual being that never actually had lived before, but came into existence because of the collective psychic energy of the group of people. It's kind of like the idea in Warhammer that if all the orcs think the color red makes things faster, then all you gotta do is paint a spaceship red or a car red, and it'll drive faster. So it's kind of a crude idea of magic based entirely on belief. To where there's because there's different forms of magic that there's magic where it's like, okay, are you borrowing power from another entity? Because that's technically what the traditional idea of witchcraft is, is that you're borrowing magic from a malevolent being that is also using you and is perhaps dangerous to you. But of course, there's so many different interpretations of that. But then there's the idea of, I mean, people would, in the past would consider science and technology magic. And then there's the, the idea of magic being just the power of will that, hey, you go to the gym, you just like believe in yourself harder and train harder. It's like, oh, is that magic? Or is this, you know, hard work, determination? Or just pushing yourself really hard and using adrenaline properly and endorphins and shit, like Baki the Grappler crap. Or just supplements, like, oh, you had enough creatine and protein. It's like, oh, this guy's stronger. But he took this one medication. What was it? Calcium. It's like, oh, this... These mushrooms that are in the forest. It's like, are they hallucinogenic? No, they they let you shoot lasers. Okay, I'm being silly. Okay, all of that aside, the main point being is this. The Michio that I met, if this is, if this theory, because here's the thing. That calendar hasn't been changed in two months since the time they were cursed. That means during that cursed event, Doryu was cursed. Michio was killed. Michio's been dead this whole time. I never met Michio. Two months ago, heck, it could be Doryu is like linked to the doll or is the doll or is the doll reincarnated. I don't know. But there's a good chance Doryu is actually the ghost of the um, doll spirit, fiancé woman, who may be a separate being that was cursed by the Mushigami deity, or it could be a split personality, to where both deities are the same person. They're just... It's like the sensui of the, um, you know, ghost world. It's like there's multiple personalities. Can ghosts have multiple personalities? Can ghosts have split personality? 
Can a ghost be schizophrenic? Can ghosts have ADHD? Can ghosts have autism? Can a ghost have depression? Can a ghost be bipolar? I don't know. Anyway, main point is this. Why? What happens to people that did, ha like, say a person does have multiple personalities or even any sort of mental illness? Or What happens to a person with multiple personalities or even borderline personality disorder or dissociative identity disorder or any of those types of things when they die? Does it have bearing on a ghost? Or say if a ghost wasn't any of those things when it died, can it then become that afterward? What I'm just saying is this. Is it possible the Departed and the Doll are actually the same spirit, but they're split personalities, and heck, do they even know that they were originally with the same person? Or like I said, was it that the Mushigami came around first about 150 years ago, and then like 60 years after that, there was the woman who fiance died and she was sad and killed herself. And then, then the Mushigami person cursed that person, but that spirit was kind of strong too and became the second deity that's based on foxes. The point is this. Not only is there nothing really creepy about this room, but like it's just, okay, cool. She likes plushies of frogs and shit. Here's the problem. That calendar has not moved in two months. Michio's curse was different than Doryu's. And the Michio I met is obsessed with insects. Another thing worth saying is at one point, Abe and Michio were friends. And then all of a sudden, Michio became very indignant toward him and, and started bringing up more about bugs. Which, of course, is something Abe has a huge issue with. But here's the thing. Abe wouldn't have been bothered by the whole bug issue. Because apparently Michio and Abe knew each other for a while. And they were on decent terms. And then all of a sudden Michio and him no longer got along. And also now she's... And then, you know, she saying she's obsessed with insects and stuff. But this is also bringing up more red flags. Like, he would just, even if he saw it as a supernatural thing, either he's dealing with a supernatural enemy that's too powerful, that's hiding stuff from him, or all it's a being that can hide as other people. But here's the thing. How do you take the place of another person? You kill them first. The idea is this. The Michio... The human Michio. The real Michio. I never met her. She died over a month before I stepped foot in this school. So, over a month before I stepped foot in this school, Michio was already a corpse rotting in the ground somewhere. And for over a month plus, there was a insect god masquerading in her skin pretty much like think the original men in black but yeah everything here says nothing to do with insects it's obsessed with frogs and also frogs would be seen as a bit offensive but that's what happened Doryu was cursed Michio though Michio died Michio died two months ago Michio died over a month before I even met her. The person I met was never Michio. It was something wearing her skin like a puppet. Mimicking the personality of the person she used to be. But this also begs other issues. Doryu grew up with Michio basically as sisters. Such a drastic personality change should be noticeable to anyone. 
but most of all to the person that is, you know, closest to her. So the question is this, if Doryu isn't aware of this, either one, she's in on it, or two, the curse mark is messing with her memory and controlling her. But yeah, the main point is this. Michio, the real Michio, the human Michio. She died over a month before I ever even met her. And the person I met slightly under a month ago, we're dealing with, like I said, a men in black situation where it's a large insect being that is wearing her skin like a suit. Now we just need the cups of sugar water for her to be sipping on. But yeah. Doryu is either complicit and in on it. Or she's strongly under the influence of the other being due to the curse. There's a large poster of a loving frog mom and her frog child. But yeah. Two Ish. months. It's remain in August. Michio died before I ever even met her. The real Michio died a couple months ago. She died over a month before I even met her. I never actually met the real Michio. I met... A ghost deity insect god pretending to be her in a mocking facsimile of her personality. But it also begs the question is this Is there going to be frogs in here that are died of starvation? Is there going to be dust collected in places showing that this place has not been lived in for a while? Like, is there going to be a layer of dust on this bed? Showing that Michio has not been sleeping in this bed at all. Kuku. There's a large poster of a living frog mom and a frog child. Kuku. There's a thin layer of dust on the desk. I called it! <laughs> Along with a notebook, Froggy Log 3 is written on the cover. As the title suggests, the notebook is all about a frog it seems she was caring for. I see a lot of enthusiastic praise inside. Things like, oh my god, so cute, or true beauty. There's also some cute drawings that convey her affection towards her pet amphibian, which has probably died of starvation over a month ago. But with no dates mentioned in the entries, it's hard to guess when she wrote these. Other than that, there are a lot of notes about her frog's food. She fed it either crickets, flies, or earthworms, trying to learn what the frog liked most. Furthermore, she happily noted that the frog would eat insects that she probably disliked. So the real Michio actually disliked insects and only saw them as a food source for her pet. Hmm. There's a frog-shaped board hanging on the wall. I find two notes. So one note is about raising a frog. The other is about her summer vacation plans. School day. Go to Clock Tower of Hime. That must have been the day she and Doryu discovered the female doll in the Clock Tower. A mattress sits atop a typical pipe bed frame, and there's a stuffed frog sitting by the pillow. She only has a light blanket on the bed. Does she not get cold at night? Is there dust on the bed? Has she even been using it? Has anyone used this bed? Her dresser is most likely filled with clothing. There's a stuffed frog atop the top. Should I check her drawers, too, just in case? I hesitate a bit, but I realize there's bigger issues than decorum at play here. Inside the drawers are Michio's casual clothes. These clothes reveal that she didn't appear to care overly much about fashion, as some of the clothes are very similar to one another. I also inspect the backs to be sure, but I don't find anything hidden on them. The real Michio never really existed as far as I was... Like, the real Michio, she's... Heck. 
I'm saying that the insect god is doing like a facsimile of her personality, but here's the thing. Aside from the insect thing, what else was changed? Was her personality very different from the person I met? But yeah, this screams, the Michio I met wasn't human. The real Michio was already rotting in the ground, dead five weeks before I even met her. So by the time I met Michio, the real Michio, the human Michio, was already rotting in the ground and had died five weeks earlier. And by the time I met, met her, she'd already been masquerading as Michio for five weeks. And she's continued to do so for these three weeks. I never met Michio. Moe said lost souls are often seen in places near spiritual disorders. So why is this thing here then? It's rather curious to find it here, although it's too early to use this as evidence against Michio. Even if this dorm is cursed, we can't just assume that Michio was the cause of it. The problem is... This screams that there's something wrong. That, you know, her, her personality isn't frogs. Instead, I met somebody who was obsessed with insects. Somebody who loved their pet frog let it starve to death. There's a blanket. The person's not living here. It's a just... It's a front. Layer of dust. Last notes, October 8th. This is still in October. The real Michio died two months ago. The real Michio is probably already a skeleton. The person I met... Then again, I had a similar reaction. Spoilers! Raging Loop. Uh, one of the protagonists that are in your group, who actually looks a bit similar to Michio, in fact, turns out to be the main antagonist, the spider god lord of nightmares, Sushigumu. Which is an eldritch horror spider being the size of a mountain. But it was masquerading as a young woman. So... Parallels that I should have seen coming, but I guess I was distracted by boobies in a pretty face. <laughs> Aside from the small frog decorations, there's also a plastic fish tank on the Inside the tank is a dead frog! Because it died on top of a dry stone, its body is completely shriveled up, it's bone dry. Which means it has not been fed since Michio died two months ago. Bring the little one. Frogs drive away bugs. Ugh. The whisper suddenly invades my mind. This isn't the first time I've experienced. Oh, the doll's telling me to bring the dried frog. A strange voice is speaking to me. I guess in a way, since it was a pet that was precious to the real Michio, that the ghost of Michio would probably be a vengeful spirit against the god being. And so then the frog would be a sacred item in, tied to that spirit. That also means if I ever meet a ghost Michio, it will be my first time ever meeting the actual real Michio. Or, who knows, maybe Doryu's a normal flesh and blood person who's cursed by the departed and maybe the spirit inside the doll is the real Michio. Maybe the real spirit of the real Michio is inside the doll now fused with the... I don't know. Bring the little one. The frog drives away bugs. Are they telling me to bring this dead frog somewhere? For what reason? I wonder myself. Well, the voices in my head told me to do it. I guess I should, right? Everyone's like, that's terrible advice. But the voice in my head never gives me an answer. Or steers me wrong. Sitting here waiting for an answer will get me nowhere. But what I need to do is make a decision. And I've always chosen to follow the guidance of the spirit's whisper. Who knows, maybe this frog has some kind of spiritual power. Obtain dried up frog. I just put it in my pocket. Is anyone going to emotionally respond about putting a frog in my pocket that's died two months ago? 
That concludes my inspection. Why was that startling? Did you learn anything, Mr. Yashiki? I'm not sure yet. I'm going to wait till I'm at the firmary to say anything, because I don't feel safe here. Yeah, a lot. Huh? Just what did you learn? The residents' preferences changed. They went from being extremely fond of frogs and hating insects, and seeing them as just things to dislike to be used as food, to loving them and being obsessed with them. Dimitri I know loves bugs, but the owner of the room clearly loves frogs. Additionally, from what she wrote in her notebook, she only considers bugs to be food for a frog. That's a pretty drastic change in personality, don't you think? Well, true, but she's always been a fickle person. Her preferences change every once in a while. Enough that she would let her frog starve to death in the same tiny room she lives in? Last year, she was really into video games. Before that, she was obsessed with puzzles. You are also under the effects of a curse that may be affecting your ability to think since around the same time she died. You are also accursed with another curse on top of your first curse. You have multiple curses. One curse is peanut butter, the other curse is jelly. You have made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich of being cursed. So honestly, it doesn't seem all that weird. Answer me, Doryu. When did Michio start liking bugs? Um, it was around the end of August, when our summer break ended. The resident loves frogs. The owner of this room loves frogs. The stuffed dolls, fish tank, poster, this place is stuffed with the gills of frogs. This seems like something quite important. Uh, Mr. Yashiki? Why would that be important? Because frogs are antagonistic of bugs. How do I say it? It's hard to explain, but I just kind of feel it. Oh, alright. Judging by the way she's staring at me, I don't think she's very convinced. There's no sign of life in this room. There's no sign of life in this room. There's a layer of dust on the desk, and she neglected the frog she's been raising. Furthermore, the calendar in August is almost as if time stopped here. But, but, yeah. Michio died two months ago. The real, human, flesh and blood Michio. She died five weeks before I ever even met her. And for five weeks, an insect has been using her skin as a suit, parading around, pretending to be her, but perverting it into being her own, you know, the personality of the bug deity, Mushigami. And then, for the next three weeks, I have been talking to a ghost, pretending to be a human. Pretending to be a human that they themselves murdered. And then... They took control of me and forced me to murder the person that didn't exist. Okay. Michio came back here every day. She might have returned here, but I honestly doubt that she spent her time here as a human. Oh my god. Time in this room stopped in August same time as her dramatic change in preferences. That can't be coincidence in my book. Something must have happened to Michio around that time. She turned into a different person after that point. Basically, the real Michio, unless she was just possessed, kept alive. But at that point, we're like, we're splitting hairs here. It's semantics then. Because here's the thing, am I, because at that point, that's basically a lobotomy. Either she was outright murdered, her body was completely destroyed, and then a spirit either pretended to be her, or wore her skin like a suit. Or, let's say Michio didn't technically die. At which point, she's either been lobotomized, and the person's dead, and she was basically made brain dead, but the rest of the body was fine, and it was being controlled like a puppet. Or, she has been, her mind has been just sort of either put to sleep, or locked in a cage inside her own mind, trapped like, and it just forced to watch everything through her own eyes and ears, but not able to interact. Think like the Gao Old, using hosts in Stargate SG-1. The person's there as a prisoner, watching everything, hearing everything, but not able to actually do anything. And they're helpless, as their body is being used as a mannequin by their abductor. Either way, we're splitting hairs. Yo, know, murder, lobotomy, being controlled like a puppet. Isn't that all the same? Heck, I've expressed that I feel lobotomy is one of the worst things you can do to a person. 
And yes, I understand the people who started the medical practice thought they were helping people. I understand that. But heck, sometimes good intentions can lead to the worst evil atrocities that could ever exist, even if the person meant well. At which point, it's just a very confusing thing. Because many times I feel like it's a, it's a thought that count. It's your intentions that count. But at the same time, you can't deny the overall suffering and cruelty that it wound up causing, even if the person causing the cruelty and the suffering wasn't aware of it, or even if they thought they were helping. But it's always a huge gray area, and it's, like I said, it's kind of the Hippocratic Oath sort of thing. Like the idea that a doctor should try their best to do no harm. Heck, there's the idea that you should never prescribe a lethal dose of medication to somebody, even back then, that if someone's in too much pain, you don't just give them a lethal dose of poison to kill them to end their suffering. And of course, we have different kinds of medications nowadays to do that. The question is, is it moral to let somebody you know, off themselves, even with medical help, if they're in too much pain? Like, say, if they have, like, stage 4 terminal cancer, they're going to die anyway, and their life is... And honestly, yeah, I'd say in that situation, I mean, if the person's suffering that much, I mean, if it's not worth it to live at that point, it's... I wouldn't want somebody to suffer needlessly. But at the same time, I feel like there should be some way to either alleviate that suffering or to just eliminate the cause of that suffering and make the person happy. It, I understand there are some situations where it would be necessary. But even then, I feel like it should be treated as the absolute last resort. And I feel like in modern times, a lot of times in doctors, especially I hear about Canada, it's just the self, the assisted, you know, euthanasia stuff. It seems like there's too much, like people are too, I don't know, I, not, I don't want to say eager, but it's like they're not hesitant enough to embrace doing harm to somebody in order to the idea of helping them. Like, I feel like it should, like, I understand there are some situations where, okay, you have to. But even then, I feel like it should be an absolute last resort. I mean, at the end of the day, is this, I personally feel, you know, lobotomy is worse than murder. But, the point is, whether she was murdered or lobotomized and her corpse was controlled, or her lobotomized body was controlled. Basically what happened was, two months ago, two months ago, Michio Kinokawa was murdered by the bug god Mushigami, who then paraded around in her skin as a suit, pretending to be her for five weeks and started murdering people. And then I showed up and she has continued to parade around in the corpse of the person that she murdered pretending to be her and pretending to be my friend and pretending to help me and then took control of me and then forced me to murder the person who I thought was my friend, and then I felt sad and guilty and depressed. I felt despondent over beating the shit out of the person who was my friend and my ally with a damn crowbar, walked away from her bloody corpse, went with her best friend to eat some scrambled eggs, sleep at my desk, and then go on and see giant ghost grasshoppers on everyone's back. All the while thinking, oh no, I killed somebody. And like... And like, I, I understand. It's a video game. I'm a person in the real world. And... But at the same time, I, the real human being person playing the game, also felt sad and bothered by it. I even tried to go back and change the circumstances. It's like, Okay, maybe I can save Michio. Like, oh no, I have to save her. Like, I don't want this person to die. But the person was never alive! They died over a month before I ever, ever even met them. Either their corpse was already sitting out in the woods somewhere, 
or in the clock tower already rotting before I ever even got there. Heck, maybe the corpse I saw Michio was hers, but maybe like her body had just been there the whole time. Or, or maybe the departed Ben parading around as Michio using, like I said, it's Man in Black. It's the giant insect alien took over Earl's body from that farm, killed him, and then wore his skin as a suit. That's what happened. The Mushigami God Insect God Spirit murdered Michio and then wore her skin as a suit, going around pretending to be her and murdering people and even manipulating depressed ghosts to also murder people so that I had to be called here to try to stop the murders. Then you pretended to be my friend, and you lied to me, and you manipulated me, and you pretended to actually be my friend. And then you took control of my body against my will, drove me into temporary insanity, and caused me to brutally murder, with a crowbar, the person who I thought was my friend, in a very scary circumstance, Surrounded by ghosts. And then... I go home with the best friend of the said friend who I just bloodily beat at the behest of giant spider god person with centipedes. And... And she put too much curry and red pepper on the scrambled eggs and it was kind of hot. And then I didn't have enough sugar to add to my coffee, so it wasn't sweet enough. I didn't sleep very well. I kind of passed up like five minutes on my desk while trying to read the damn book that, you know, for a while there turned covered red blood everything. Said kill everywhere. And then I show up here and then everyone's like, hey, guess what? Giant grasshoppers! Giant uncanny valley cricket people. And it's like... Okay. But then I find out that the person I thought my friend, that person was never real. The real one, the real Michio Kinokawa, didn't like insects at all. She loved frogs. I don't even know if her personality, in terms of how, I mean, let's just how right say it, how affectionate and attached she basically was toward me. I don't think the real Michio Kinokawa would have behaved that way. She would probably would have behaved much more like all the other students. The other thing is this. Even before the first supernatural thing happened, where she got, you know, had the issue with Kash Kashima, nobody in the right fucking mind is going to choose to be involved in this shit unless there's some serious thing. Now, Doryu, again, she might be somehow like involved in the other ways I mentioned, but it is also an issue of this. She's already cursed, she's already involved, and her best friend is dead. It's a very emotional thing. Person thinking more about the emotions of, oh no, I'm upset because my friend's dead, as opposed to, you know, my friend's dead. Maybe I should leave the place with a giant, you know, insect god that's going to murder everyone in the city. Because if you think at it from a logical standpoint, the only logical course of action is to book a fucking plane ticket to the other side of the planet. But of course she's thinking emotionally. You know, her friend, her best friend, her childhood friend, the closest person she really is to her life, because that person's dead. So that's a very emotional thing. That's understandable that she wouldn't be thinking clearly on this. The main point is this. I never met the real Michio. I never met her. I never met Michio Kinukawa. The real Michio Kinukawa was murdered five weeks before I met her. I didn't. I never met Michio Kinukawa. I met an insect inside her skin that was parading her flesh and her skin like a puppet pretending to be her while being a serial killer 
I met a, I met an insect god, ghost, spirit, giant centipede spider cricket person who was a serial killer who carved out its victim, wore their clothes like, you know, House of a Thousand Corpses suit. Like it's a fucking Rob Zombie movie. And went around continuing to be a serial killer. To the point that I was called to try to stop the serial killing. Then the serial killer pretended to be my friend. And then... They made me think that I murdered my friend that never existed. And I felt bad about that! And I feel bad about this too, but in a different way! That other way was me being more sad. This way is I'm more angry. Because in that I was like, oh fuck. You know, I killed my friend and this person was helping me and... You know, an innocent person is dead. And not only did I fail to save them, but I'm the cause. As opposed to, oh! My friend was never real! That person died over a month before I ever met them, and I met someone parading their skin around like it's a fucking mannequin! She was basically a fucking hand puppet! With piles of spiders up her like a hand up fucking Jeff Dunham piloting- I still think it'd be a good Batman movie. Jeff Dunham as a ventriloquist from uh, the Batman animated series, and like, you can have Willem Dafoe as the, the Reaper, which is an anti-villain, and have Willem Dafoe beat the shit out of Jared Leto Joker. It could be another Ben Affleck movie. I still think Batman vs. Superman was a good movie. I thought Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill are great actors. And they did a great job in the movie. They're like, oh, parts of the plot were stupid. I'm like, parts of reality are stupid. You know? At the end of the day, yes, some aspects of it seem dumb. But you know what it was? Realistic! And that's so saying something. For a movie about a space alien that flies around fighting a rich man who dresses at a dresses up as a bat and punches people in the face. I don't main point is this. Michio Kinikawa died five weeks before I met her. So I never met the real Michio Kinikawa. But but is person even the right word here? Now here's the thing. I have a concern. Is Hemic is Doryu going to react violently here? After all, she's under the influence of multiple curses and multiple spirits, and there's multiple other things going on, and so I mean even foregoing the human psychology aspect of it. Given just given the multiple curses and multiple vengeful spirits involved. Is she likely to just get possessed at this moment and her face like scream wide, elongated, like like a freaking uncanny valley alien movie to where like like her face becomes more contorted than the vengeful spirit on her back? And her arms become like centipedes and stuff and her like, is she going to suddenly transform and start trying to, like, brutally murder me right now? And again, I understand that's a bit of paranoid thought, that I'm basically treating like we're about to go into a freaking Higurashi when they cry scenario. But, you have to agree, that's not really that far out of the question, given what we've seen in the game. So, part of me is like, with all the ghosts involved, is she going to suddenly turn violent? and try to murder me? You're like, well, she's just a frail person. You know, she's shorter than you. She's less muscular. That's true. That's true. Yashiki is much stronger. But that doesn't stop her from suddenly, even under normal human physical constraints, just, I don't know, stabbing me or getting a critical attack or, like, raking my face and trying to, like, slash into my neck or something. Even more so, if supernatural powers and razor blades start, like, flying out of her, like, legs and arms and shoulders, like it's a cyberpunk mantis blade situation. 
Everyone's like, you played a little bit too much Cyberpunk 2077. Like, I know. Mr. Yashi, you're saying that this room hasn't changed in a long time, and that Michio changed her, inter it changed her interest because she'd become the departed? That's right. You must be joking. Michio is the departed? No, it can't be. Doryu protests frantically. I understand her feelings, I truly do. I don't want to wake everyone else up in the building, though. Michio really had changed since the end of August. That means when we first met at school that night, she was already... For the entire time I've known Michio, she was the departed. That was the thing! She was the departed for over... Five weeks! Before I met her! That's another thing! You're scared of this situation! What, were you just using the ghost to create a bonding situation between us? Like, trauma bonding? Or were you just like, ooh, I want to, like, it, it'd be all romantic. Like, oh, we're going out with this guy, and I'm, like, close to him for safety. Like, you're just treating it like a date? Like, this was, like, going to a horror museum? Or, like, a theme park? This was your equivalent of a theme park. I mean, I get okay. I mean, honestly, I've been on worse dates in real life. And everyone's like, that's a terrible joke. I'm like, that's not a joke! I've actually had worse dates in real life than the uh, actual date that The Departed took Yashiki on. Which that's just depressing, but still. Main point being is, one, were you just pretending? And that's another thing, is this. Were you pretending to be cursed at the school? Were you pretending to be cursed at the, the clock tower scenario? Or it was like Michio's spirit somewhere, you just like sort of shoved her back in her own body just to suffer. Or even then, if she's like the Stargate situation, she's still there watching it. But now we have Okay, so we have a giant spider insect centipede ghost murdered a human, paraded in her body like a suit, and then got purposely possessed by another angry ghost person that they themselves were manipulating to kill people because the Departed was the one that spurred Kashima on. So the serial killer murdered Michio, wore her skin like a suit, then manipulated another serial killer who had basically gone into hibernation to then become active and then jokingly made the other serial killer make the other serial killer into his victim and, and her victim but not quite kill her all because she thought it would be a cool date or a fun experience or something to throw me off the trail or just because she thought it would be fun like it was just It's like, oh, like the, I'm like, hey, the bot, the, the the departed. What were, what were you doing, having another? Like, you're already, you already murdered somebody, and you're parading in uh, your innocent victim's skin as a suit, and now you're getting possessed by another spirit on top of that. It's like, what's into that? Like, and, and then the departed's like, I'm kinky, I'm kinky like that. I'm like, what? So literally, a lot of... Then again, that can be like described the same way in regard to the antagonists, Mary and Kuko... Ku Technically, you had the Momo doll in the second game, as well as... Because you have a doll character in each game. But then you also had the Sushigumo stuff, and then there was the... Um, well, that was Raging Loop. But there was also, which also falls to the same category, where it's like a sort of romantic thing, but it's like a perverted expression of it. And then there's, of course, the um, Tsuchinomi Itachi, like Itachi's eyeball tried to conquer the planet or something from a elevator of a dinosaur museum, and then there was like Ben Stiller or something. I don't know. Rob Schneider is... A stapler! Okay. 
got distracted. Main point being, why does the ending, like, the short and sweet of, oh, why is the villain like this? The villain is kinky. Then again, I've seen hentai of the Shigo character, that woman villainess from uh, Kim Possible, but as Futa, and that's really sexy. Then again, I'm the kind of person that I like Futanari Bowsette and Futanari Boozette. I like big boobs, okay? I am a fan of jiggle physics. Granted, I'm a bit of a science nerd. I'm a bit of a fan of physics in general. But particularly jiggle physics. I wonder if, like, if I had the necessary, you know, certifications and educational, you know, official requirements, qualifications, if I could be a professor in a college class to where my class could be, yes, I, my entire course is about the uh, science behind jiggle physics. Today I want you to write down the equation for how this boob should jiggle on a trampoline. But yeah, I'm just saying, why does it mount to, oh, why are my villains like this? Because they're kinky. Why am I fighting kinky ghosts? Why are the ghosts kinky? But it's literally, the, that was, so, the meteor right there was not a real person. She was a, a ghost god being that's a couple hundred years old, that's insects, that's murdered hundreds, if not thousands of people. Because remember, the part is responsible for people dying over hundreds of years ago. So, and that's another thing. People say, oh, the age gap. Here's the thing. Regardless how old Mich Yashiki is, he's human. The Departed's at least going on a couple hundred years old. It's, it's, it's like, it's okay, officer. The person's 9,000 years old. Uh, but I'm just saying, it's like, at this point, you're already a super powerful ghost god with more spiritual power than the person on the left that you're pretending to be scared of. You even let that person take control of you. You had the upper hand at all times. You could have killed all of us. This would be the equivalent of Frieza having a joke sparring match with Raditz in which he tries to let Raditz win. Because it got Frieza off. That's, that's what we're talking about here. This is the equivalent of Frieza having a sparring match with Raditz. Back before the events of the Saiyan Saga, so before everyone met Goku, back when they thought Goku was still, you know, or, or, I don't know if Raditz was... But I'm just saying this. Back before Raditz ever brought up that he had a brother, imagine if there was a joke fight between Frieza and Raditz, in which Frieza forced Raditz to fight him riled him up, insulted him, and even said, hey, fight me, or I kill Vegeta and Nappa. And Vegeta's like, fucking fight him, man. And then Frieza does his best to purposely lose. Because it's giving Frieza a boner. And as Frieza is purposely letting Raditz beat him, even though Raditz really stands no chance at all, this is the equivalent of Frieza letting Raditz spank him on the ass because it's making Frieza nut. That's what this is. This is the equivalent of Frieza forcing Raditz to fight him and then purposely losing to Raditz because it's Frieza's kink. And it's like Frieza's then like grabbing Raditz's arm and like twist my nipples and like Raditz is like I'm uncomfortable Frieza please Emperor of the Universe please stop and Frieza's like twist my nipples or I slice Vegeta in half and Vegeta's like covering his eyes like for the love of God Raditz just do it Nappa are you throwing up? Wait Sarbon, why are your pants down? Oh God he's masturbating to this 
I'm just saying, this is the equivalent of Frieza forcing Raditz to fight him and then purposely losing to Raditz because it turns him on, gets him hard, and makes Frieza nut all over himself. That's what this is. This is the equivalent of Frieza, like, doing kinky shit. This, this, like I said, this is the equivalent of Frieza getting into a fight with Raditz, forcing Raditz to fight him, and then purposely losing to Raditz because it's his kink and it gets him off. This video is now me kink shaming Frieza. But that's what this is. Like, the Departed has enough power here to kill all of us. And yet she is pretending to be scared and holding on to me like she's frightened. And then purposely lets the other ghost that she brought out of hibernation. This is like Freddy Krueger after waking up Jason, letting Jason stab him a few times. Because it's fun. This is like some bondage kinky shit. That's the thing. I don't don't have any interest in the bondage stuff. Which is weird because a lot of my stuff people could probably describe as being a bit kinky or overly sexual. But I don't see the interest in, you know, bondage or stuff like that. Or any of that stuff. It's just not my cup of tea. Though I do like Earl Grey. Earl Grey is good tea. I've been making a lot of black tea. I stopped drinking energy drinks and soda a couple weeks ago. I'm sleeping better. I'm just tired all the time, though. But I've been trying to drink a lot of back black tea to, you know, make up for the caffeine loss. But I'm still tired. And a bit lethargic, but of course, that's also depression, so who knows. I'm just saying! That's what this is. This is the equivalent of Frieza forcing Raditz to fight you. But there's another layer to it. This also involved Frieza's like, hey, Vegeta, Nappa, Raditz, I have a friend I made on another planet who had never heard the Emperor Frieza. They don't have you know, technology thing. They're, out, they're people stuck in the medieval age. So they don't even have electricity yet. That being said, I made them think that I'm a good person and that I'm a sweet, delicate flower. So I want all of you to pretend like you're horrible, evil villains. And I'm going to get into a fight with Raditz. I know you're not uncomfortable. I know you're uncomfortable with this Raditz, and you feel weird about it. But I want you to beat the shit out of me and twist my nipples. While the other person feels helpless to save me. And then I want to purposely lose to you, Raditz, because it gets me off. And then I look at the person I brought from another planet who I pretended to be their friend. And as I see they cry and feel sad thinking I'm dead, I'm going to nut a second time. And then I'm going to get up and then kill them, which will cause me to nut a third time. I'm just saying, this is the equivalent of Frieza. Purposely losing to Raditz after forcing Raditz to fight Frieza against his will and then purposely losing to Raditz because it's Frieza's kink and it gets him hard and makes him nut and gets him off. I'm kink shaming Frieza. Wait a minute. If I'm saying Kina Cow is Frieza, I'm saying Kashmira, Kashmita, Kashmir, Kash, Kashmira, the ghost, Kashimata. I can't remember her name. The sister person ghost on the left side of the screen, whose name I said earlier in this video, and I can't remember what it was. I'm saying this person on the left is Raditz. Okay, so we're kink shaming Frieza. For the entire time I know Micho, she was the departed. The departed is a spirit. Spirits are already dead. Put it like that, Michio from that time. 
Either she wasn't real, or I wound up seeing the Michio from a month ago, which point there wouldn't have been flesh there. It would have just been a skeleton. Everyone's like, how long does it take for flesh to like decompose off? It depends on the environment. And there's supernatural shit going on. And usually hot, warm, moist, moldy environments, corpses will decompose faster. But at the same time, I think like Lake Tahoe and Salt Lake City and stuff, depending on the saline content of water, or I think the, again, I think Lake Tahoe is supposed to be one of the coldest lakes on the planet, despite the fact that it's fresh water. And it's, you know, next to deserts is one of the, like, the deeper parts of it is some of the coldest fresh water on the planet. So technically people that, you know, drown there, their bodies are almost preserved and they don't decay at all. Think like mummification, but with extra steps. But Mr. Yashiki, if the Michio we knew really was the departed, what about the real Michio? She died two months ago. The real Michio died two months ago. Also, why on earth would the departed last get back to the infirmary knowing what we know now? Grant, we're not that far away. But I would imagine the departed, either the departed, one, is going to be pissed, or two, they're going to be ba sitting back, you know, stroking it and fingering themselves, saying, yes, I've been waiting for this. This is the good part. This is like watching a porn, and you're like, yes, finally, we're almost to the cum shot. Everyone's like, you're making it weird. This was always weird. Have you, is this my, one, this was already weird at the beginning of the video. And not just this playlist. Every single video I have made has been weird. My heck, my intro. I am the cringiest person on the internet. All my videos are weird. This is a place where I talk about any sort of filter and I just sort of talk and if you guys enjoy it, that's cool. But I mainly just do it because I'm crazy and I'm weird. After all, greetings one and all to the most cursed, most cringiest corner of the internet. A YouTube channel content creator actively alienating everyone in both the analog and digital world. Well, welcome and good evening, you wonderful dice of all alignments. I am Lunar D8. And, yeah, I'm, I'm weird. Also, I need a hug. It's not hard to imagine. The Departed replaced the real Michio. Both of them wouldn't have been able to exist at the same time, so I'm sure she was killed months ago. This can't be real. She's probably going to faint, even without the ghost shit going on. You know, she's been having a lot of psychological stuff going on with all the ghost shit. I mean, not just the supernatural aspect, but I mean, it's very emotionally traumatizing shit. I mean, she's probably going to pass out. I mean, I guess I could carry her, but I'd rather not, especially if all the ghosts and cricket monsters are going to be chasing me. Our business here is done. We've learned what we wanted to know. Or rather, we learned what we didn't want to know. I knew. The whole point of coming here was trying to prove that she was innocent, that she was not the departed. And yet, we've confirmed it. She is the departed. The real, the real Michio died months ago. I never met the real Michio. I met a hundred to several thousand year old god, ghost bug deity, pretending to be a person, while also being a serial killer. And I have unwittingly had to participate in Frieza's fap session. <sighs> Take a drink. It's good water. Ever since leaving the dorm, Doryu had a blank look on her face. Yeah, she's in shock. I can't blame her. She just lost her best friend a second time. I bet she's got no tears left to cry at this point. Uh, but why would the departed let me get back to the infirmary in this situation? You okay? Yes. A short, hollow response. She looks so pale, I'm worried that she might just collapse. Yeah, she's probably going to faint. Her blood pressure's probably gone low from this. And her heart rate's probably super high. I mean, it's a lot of shock. But also, you know, it's something that she'll probably emotionally ignore for a few months and then sort of eventually come to terms with. And then she'll probably cry a bunch after that. But things like this take time. Let's head back to the infirmary. We need to share this information with the others. Cool, cool. 
Insects are pretty common in the school grounds and the nearby areas. Is this because of the departed? Did I find a tooth? Watch out the corner of the bench, I find something on the ground. Pick it up, it's near your tooth. It does let me go this way. But I feel concerned about actually going everywhere. Part of me is like, oh, I can search the building for more teeth and clues and context. I could go to the other rooms of this place. Like, I could go to the faculty or student council or library. Maybe get more information, but no, we're going to the infirmary. Which hopefully Departed doesn't hop in here. Masha and Yasuoka are waiting for me. I better report our findings with them. Trade! Let's get superpower shit. That reminds me, I brought new sacred objects. Another five percent. I think that's worth more than additional point. Especially how it seems like where we are with getting failed states. Talk. You're finally here. What did you find? I tell them the information I learned from the student dormitory. Knew it. Michio Kinikawa is the departed. And now that the whole murder in the clock tower is also cleared up, that was just another one of the departed's tricks. Kinikawa manipulated you into thinking you killed her. Why did she do that? Because it's her kink. Probably to destroy your mind with fear. Because it's her kink. She wanted to drive you insane. Because it's her kink. Maybe you being insane is one of the Departed's marriage requirements. Isn't that the requirement for anyone getting married? You're thinking like an insane bride deserves an insane groom. It makes some sense. Killing a student who's in love with you. That certainly would be something that could drive a person mad. Yeah, I know, I felt bad about that. My mind would have been shattered had Doryu not shown up that day. Say, Doryu? Is the whole Avenge Michio for me promise I made with you still intact? Yes. This doesn't change the fact that Departed still harmed Michio. I think she did a lot more than that! Alright, I'll do my best then. Yashiki, there's something I'd like to tell you. I've deciphered the book you gave me. It's how to beat Tetris. Appreciate it. This book details an ancient M-Town ritual. Allow me to give you the gist. Okay. I jot down what Yasuoka says in the notebook. Summary of the old M-Town book. In the past, severe famine devastated M-Town. Residents of M-Town believed that the fury of their deities, Mushigami and Kabigami, were the cause of the tragedy. Hence, shrines were built to worship the deities. Mushigami Shrine was located in downtown, while the Kabigami Shrine was built in the Fox Forest. Fo in the Fox Forest. Mushigami Shrine and Kabigami Shrine were merely halls of worship for the two deities. One, an insect deity. The latter, a mold deity? I thought it was a fox deity. I thought it was a fox deity. Or being Kabigami, maybe cabbage deity. Mold. So, we have a bug deity and a mushroom deity. What is this, Super Mario Brothers? The main shrine to both, Mushikabi, is located elsewhere. Okay. Where is that? Mushikabi Shrine is located deep in the fox forest off the road. Only relatives of the, of the priests and the fox the messenger know how to get to the shrine. So something hidden. Okay. Deep, deep in the forest. The departed's wedding was held when a great famine occurred in M-Town. Held to wish for the end of the famine. This is also a sacred wedding ceremony where the matched brides and grooms exchange vows before the two deities. This ritual was last held during the Meiji era about a hundred years ago. It is said 
that selected brides and grooms completed the ceremony at the Mushikabi Shrine, the one of them deep in the forest, and the Great Famine in town finally came to an end. Because it is a holy ritual, the selection criteria for the brides and grooms was quite stringent. The grooms must be from the priest's family and have impeccable spiritual qualities. As for the brides, they must be pure maidens that come from a decent family. Furthermore, both of them have to be exceptional in all aspects, including their intelligence, lineage, and personality. Hence, the chosen brides and grooms are said to be blessed and are the envy of the town. Obtained Old Book After she'd done some explaining the contents of the book, I'm left speechless. Deities named for bugs and mold. The Departed's Wedding, The Bride and the Groom, and The Selection. There are so many things in this book that overlap with The Departed's actions and remarks. This book is definitely our way to find The Departed's true identity. Agreed. It feels like we finally managed to get a real look at The Departed's history. But, Yasuoka halts her words, pondering. If there's something on your mind, just say it out loud, Yasuoka. Do you not find this strange? If the wedding ritual was a blessed event like the book said, how could the departed have been born? She has a point. Based on my previous interactions with spirits, they are birthed from grudges. This book probably only covers a sanitized version of the truth. If there's another part shrouded in the darkest aberrance, that's the part you'll need to uncover. We already inspected Mushigami Shrine in the corridor, and the Kabagami Shrine in the forest, during our encounter with Mr. Kokuri. However, we didn't find any clues about the departed. The last one, the Mushikabi Shrine, then, there might be something of note there. Mushigami Shrine is located in the depths of the Fox Forest. We don't have time to explore the whole forest. Then our only choice is to ask the Fox how to get there. Yasuoko is referring to the Fox the messenger of the gods mentioned in the book. There's a fox in the storage area of the science room, though it doesn't look like a messenger to me. I'm going to need to find another fox. Now that we have some direction, we can finally start the investigation. By the way, is Hero not coming tonight? I'm trying so hard to remember who Hero is. I... I know I should know this. I know it's one of the Mark Bears. But I'm drawing a blank. Yeah, I didn't contact her. It's a girl. Hero. Hero. I'm... I'm trying... Hero. Nope, still drawing a blank. I can't remember who the person looks like. Yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't remember a face. I made that call. This is above her pay grade now. Do you mean Moe? No, that's Watanabe. Moe Watanabe. So who is Hero? I can't remember. Character file. Madoko. That's still not helping. Oh! Okay! The scientist. Got you. I made that call. This is above her pay grade right now. The departed has transformed and grown stronger. They are more dangerous than before. So it seemed prudent not to get Hero and the other regular people involved any further. That applies to you guys, too. Don't get me wrong, I really appreciate your help. I just don't understand why you're willing to risk so much to help me. Like Yasuko said, the Depart has transformed and acknowledged me as their husband. This is on another level than helping me deal with the spirits and the notices. I have no idea what will happen next, and yet they've decided to jump into the hellhole alongside me. Where does that determination of theirs come from? This is my job. I believe it is fate. It is my fate to save those who are terrorized with the wrath of the spirits. I've only lived this long because my purpose in the world of living has not been completed yet. This is my job too, because this old hag here asked me to, and in a more literal sense, because I actually get paid to do it. The pay is worth the risk. Really? How much are they paying you, man? Simple, straightforward answers. 
This is why I have placed my faith in them. A strong faith that can't be described in words. Though honestly, I know both those answers were fucking bullshit. Heck, even saying duty and shit is bullshit. You guys are saying it because you're actually worried about me. You're here because you don't want me to die. Thank you. I'd give you a hug if I wasn't so fucking scared of the giant, like, five-foot-long bug on your back! The simple ways they lead their lives makes me feel like I can trust them with mine. Thank you. Let's head out if we're done chatting. Yeah, let's go. Wait a minute, Mr. Yashiki? Can I, can I come with you? I'll at least ask Mashita first. Do you really have to ask me, you idiot? Of course she can't come. Who in their right mind would bring a kid in the forest at night? You do make a good point. Stay put here, Doryu. But... You look awfully pale, Doryu. You if you collapse, you'll only make things more difficult for Yashiki. Let's both wait here, alright? Oh yeah, thank you for making sure she's not waiting alone. Because I don't feel there's anything that's really stopping the departed from, like, coming in this room. Heck, we have the giant bugs on everyone, too. Understood. Doryu nods reluctantly as Yasuoku's insistence. Please be very careful, Mr. Yashiki. Let's bring an end to this stupid game, Yashiki. Okay. 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 An investigation of the departed, like all of the other victims, Michio's corpse disappeared from inside the clock tower. I asked Mashita and Yasuo to help me out. Mashita suspects Michio might be the departed given their similarities. I need to investigate to see whether or not this theory is true. We needed information about Michio to determine whether or not she was the departed. Upon inspecting her room, I learned she used to like frogs instead of bugs. Dorio told me she changed around the end of August. I bet that's when the departed killed Michio and began masquerading as her. The book Yasuoku deciphered has information about a ritual called the departed's wedding. In M-Town and the village deities, Mushigami and Kabigami, bugs and mold played a big role. Mushikabi Shrine, where the ritual took place, is located deep in the forest. We need to find a way into the main shrine. If the old book speaks the truth, Mushikabi Shrine should be in the Fox Forest. In the past, the departed's wedding was held there. Perhaps there's still some truth to be found. There, that relates to the departed's birth. A fox, huh? There's an old guardian fox in the courtyard. Is that the one? Save. Okay, well, that's the end of the video. Later, guys. Hope everyone had a good day. Bye!